Have you ever wanted to make your Unity project look all wibbly wobbly, or as most people call it, distorted? Then this video is for you. This tutorial will cover how to do exactly that in Unity versions 2020 and 2021. You may have seen my other video showing how to do the same distortion effect in Unity version 2019. There are a few key differences that need to be mentioned though. The theory behind how the shader works and how the shader graph is set up is nearly identical between all versions, which means I'll skip over the boring explanation of how the shader actually works. If you want a better understanding of how this works, I highly recommend checking out my previous distortion tutorial. With that out of the way, let's go over how to set up the shader graph. I will be using the universal render pipeline to create this effect. If you are not sure how to set this up, refer to my how to make lava shader tutorial, which walks through the entire process. As an important note here, you cannot use the 2D forward renderer as your pipeline asset. We now need to create a new shader asset, which I went shader universal render pipeline, then sprite unlit shader graph. You should be able to use any of these universal render pipeline shader graphs, but I just selected one for the purpose of this tutorial. Right click on the shader graph asset and create a new material. Give it an appropriate name, then double click the shader graph asset to open the shader graph editor. Let us start off by creating a generic UV movement node. Take a time node and multiply it by a vector 2. This is the first variable we need to create in our blackboard. So create a vector 2, which I called mine distortion speed, and set both the x and y default values to 0.1. Now that we have time multiplied by our distortion speed, we feed the output of the multiply into the offset input of a tiling and offset node. Boom! You just created the basic UV movement used in hundreds if not thousands of shaders, so remember this part of the setup for future projects. Now it is time to create some sort of effect that will cause our image to look distorted. This can be done multiple ways, but I will just use a gradient noise node. Plug the output of the tiling and offset node into the UV of the gradient noise node. I want to be able to easily adjust this distortion effect, so I created a float variable in the blackboard called gradient noise scale with a default value of 3. Plug the gradient noise scale variable into the scale input of the gradient noise. We now need to grab the screen position of the object, which is done by using a screen position node. We want to multiply the screen position by the output of the gradient noise. I want a little more control for tweaking the shader, so I created another vector2 variable in the blackboard, which I called distortion power and gave the x and y default value 1. Now multiply the output of our multiply with the distortion power variable. This is essentially our distortion effect, but now we need to add it back into the scene somehow, which we do by creating an add node and taking the outputs of the screen position and the last multiply and putting them into the inputs of the add node. The graph is almost done, we just need to pass our final results through the camera's color buffer, which we do by taking the output of the add node into the input of a scene color node. Now just pass the output of the scene color node into the base color input of the fragment master node. Remember to save the asset and go back to your Unity editor. With the shader graph completed, we now need to set up our forward render data to be able to utilize the shader. Locate your forward render asset and click it. In the editor window, look for the button add render feature click it and then select render objects experimental fill out the name field with an appropriate name i went with distortion effect this next step is one of the biggest changes from the 2019 version to the 2020 and 2021 unity versions and that is in the event field we need to select before rendering opaques now under filters you'll find a field labeled q select transparent from the drop down list we need to create a layer which will be used to determine which object is doing the distorting effect. I have two sprites in my scene. One is the image of my dog, which I want to make distorted, and the other sprite is just a solid color sprite which will be doing the distortion effect. And this sprite can be absolutely anything. I just personally used a basic sprite for this example. Select the object that you'll be using to do the distortion, and in the inspector window, create a new layer. Name it appropriately, I called my new layer name Distortion Effect. We should also create a new sorting layer since we need this object to be above the objects we want to distort. So the order layer matters. I just called mine Highest Layer for Distortion Effect. Go back to the forward render feature we were making and under Filters you'll find the Field Layer Mask. From the drop down menu you'll need to select everything then uncheck your layer you made which in my case was called Distortion Effect. 
We are nearing the end of this tutorial, so if you made it this far, please consider liking the video since that really helps out the channel and makes it a worthwhile endeavor for me to continue making this type of video. Alright, so with our forward render still selected, you'll find at the very top of the inspector window another area called filtering. Under opaque layer mask, it is okay to have everything selected except for the distortion effect. But for the transparent layer mask, we need to make sure everything is selected. We have one very crucial step left and that is to go to our universal render pipeline asset and at the top of the inspector you'll find two options called depth texture and opaque texture. Make sure these options are checkmarked. The depth texture is not that crucial but the shader will not work without the opaque texture being selected. Perfect. So now all we have to do is make sure we have our distortion material attached to our distortion object. And then you should start seeing the effect work right away as long as the two objects in your scene are overlapping each other. Have fun messing around with the variables in the distortion material to get some wacky results. If you are having issues, there is a GitHub repository of this project down in the description and also a link to my Discord. With all that out of the way, I want to thank you for watching and as always, take care and stay safe. Oh,